Hello everyone, today we'll be talking about Vanille Tonka from Parfum de Nicolai. I finally got it. It wasn't a very long wait, let's be serious. However, I fell in love with this fragrance when I reviewed Odalisque and also smelled some of their um, samples that the perfumery gave me. And this is, you know, the importance of samples because first of all, you can discover some things. It also um, saves you a lot of money from, for blind buys, you know, and also you get to wear the fragrance for some time and you can really tell that if it's to your liking or not. So this is Vanille Tonka, a fragrance that came out in uh, 1997. I have to briefly mention that this is a 30 milliliter bottle and Nicolai Parfumeur Créateur still use fair prices, which means this, um, the small bottles are equitably priced. I paid something like 60 euros for this and this is, you know, the official price. This is not discounted and I've already smelled this, as I said, because I had a sample. You can check out the video I made for Odalis to see my first impressions on that one. But this is something I really, really love and I wanted to talk to you about, again, about this fragrance because I want to clear some things up. This is a fragrance that's called Vanille Tonka. And it is stunning, it is beautiful. However, for some people who might see this name and suppose that this would be a vanilla bomb or a Tonka almondy bomb, things stand quite, you know, quite differently. And this is, I think, why I love this so much, because when I was ordering the sample, I wanted to see maybe how similar it would be to Guerlain's Tonka Imperial, which I have right here, and maybe we'll talk about it briefly, because a comparison is indeed required. I maybe thought it would be in sort of the same genre, which would be a very almondy, ambery fragrance. The pleasure of the surprise I felt when I first smelled the fragrance remain to this day, because this is not, I don't think it's even an amber, although it does have ambery elements. I think it's mostly a fougere and the tonka mentioned here is not almondy quite at all. It's maybe a little bit nutty. It's not almondy, but it's coumarin, which means hayish, dried grass, bit of perspiration in there. Beautiful fragrance, beautiful. And the vanilla is so subtle and this is why I love Patricia de Nicolai's work so much. Because, you know, it's, it's, it's fresh, it's familiar, it's very much in the style that this, this could have been launched by Guerlain at any point in time, especially, you know, older Guerlain, not recent Guerlain, because God only knows what they're doing now. And so, as I said, we're going to look a bit on the notes on the official website, where are you? They call this a floral oriental, which I have no idea where the floral comes from because it's not overly floral as well. Spicy, so floral, spicy, oriental, right? Which is a strange term because oriental kind of implies amber, which this isn't, I don't think they got it wrong. They couldn't get it wrong. It's just that they um, envision this in a different way. The way it comes across is another story. So this is citrusy, but not overly citrusy. Uh, mainly it's, you know, sweetish citrus. It's more orangey mandarin. I should say bergamot-like rather than, you know, lemon. Then you've got pepper. And indeed, this is spicy, um, just like Neroli Outre Noir from Yaglan is spicy, as in multifaceted, not necessarily spicy hot. 
although it is peppery. And then you've got aniseed and orange blossom, which again, maybe that's where they think the floral, you know, aspect comes from. But the orange blossom here is so tame and I suspect it's not listed here, but I suspect there's more than a bit of benzoin in here because I do get something very, very camphorous. And benzoin and orange blossom work wonders together. They create this sort of creamy, almost beach sun sunscreen kind of aspect. I don't know how to explain this. It's, it's very beautiful. Then you've got carnation and uh, cinnamon. I'm translating from French. Give me a break. <laughs> uh, cinnamon isn't, again, isn't something very obvious, nor is the carnation. But again, everything is so well blended. It's like, if you ask me, this is indeed aptly named. It is vanilla tonka. But it's just vanilla tonka like no other like you haven't smelled vanilla tonka before but if you ask me it's the um, vanilla that comes across as a very sheer just a sliver of vanilla as i said in my previous video about Mongerlan, and i think they are kin in some way in some ways i think both of them could be called fougeres because of the coumarin and because of the freshness. And then they cite vanilla, tonka, and tobacco. And if you look on these notes, you might be tempted to think of tonka imperial, maybe, because this is also a tobacco incense. So tonka imperial is something very, very different. And let me just, because of the pleasure I have in smelling this, I know how this smells. You can imagine. Oh, there it is. So this is lush and generous with the tonka. The tonka here is almondy. It's deep. It's dark. It's leathery. It's coniferous. It's incensey. It's there. These two fragrances are, you know, polar opposites. The only meeting point is that sliver of vanilla, which in here. In Tonka Imperial is just boozy, generous again. It's so ample. It's big. This is a huge fragrance. Although both of them are very, very well balanced, very well made, I do not think they share the same genre. This Tonka Imperial is an amber, right? There's Huh. Now that I think about it, a certain Serge Lutin pops into mind when smelling both of them. And that one is Ambre Sultan. Because of course, <laughs> and um, I think it's the milkiness and the creaminess of both the fragrances that work so well. In, uh, in comparison, and I think I've compared Chergui, another Serge Lutin, which is, you know, I think shares a core with Ambre Sultan as well. I think I compare that one to Bois d'Armenie from Guerlain. It's, it's a jumble. They're all ambers, you know, at the end of the day, but oh my God, this is so addictive. At some point, I will, I will speak of Tonka. I have that video in the works, all the Tonka that there is. Um, but when I was smelling it for the first time, and when I wear Vanille Tonka, there's another Guerlain that comes to mind, and it isn't Tonka Imperial. And you should know this, and it's the reason I'm filming this video, because that other Guerlain is this one. It is Jiki. This Vanitonka is very, very similar 
tajiki and I wanted to smell them in comparison. I still have this blotter here from my previous video where I spoke about Jiki and Mongerlan. And again, I think I, I was debating if I wanted to include Vani Tonka in the same video as Mongerlan. The beauty that is Jiki with this coumarin funky freshness, because you know, you know what they say about Jiki. Um, if you've smelled Jiki, Jiki has this unmistakably strange odor, which is, you know, something like spit or um, bad breath, you know. It's a bit fecal, and it is true. I don't know where this comes from. I guess it comes from the LME. It might also come from this combination of lavender and vanilla who knows if anybody knows let me know the thing is the same bad breath odor i don't know what to call it you can find it in very small dosage in both shalimar and mongerlan and you can find it very very clear here as well in vanitonka by Nikolai. And this is why I think, and I've never smelled this in other creations. Um, maybe, yes, you can you can also smell it in Mouchoir de Monsieur, but that's also Guerlain and very much closely related to Jiki. And this is why I say that Vanitonka is more fougère than anything else. And it's not only, you know, because of the similarity with Jiki, it's the way the fragrance is Compose. this is not overpowering it's very very well balanced it's and it is a very fresh scent it is an eau de parfum but it flies off the skin like an eau de toilette would it's very it's not fleeting you know um it's it's quite powerful it has good staying power it has good sillage for people who care about things like that you can definitely tell that you're wearing vanille tonka while you're wearing it but it is just so fresh easy to wear and i suppose easy to like i don't think this would come across as unpleasant it's definitely what makes it more interesting in my opinion than any other vanilla tonka combination that you know there are out there and also because it smells like a you know like a garden it, it has it has some greenery in it. There's a sweetness. It, it kind of reminds me of old-fashioned eau de colognes, you know, like eau de Guerlain or eau de Cologne Imperial, why not? It also has the complexity to call this an incense smell or a tonka smell because there is a bit of nuttiness to this as well. It is a beautiful scent and I'm glad I have it. It is still in production, as far as I know. I could find it easily on the um, website, no problems there. And there you have it. I think this was my review of Vani Tonka by Nikolai Parfumeur Créateur. If you've got any other questions, let me know in the comments. And until next time, remember, fragrance creates memories and may yours be happy.